Here at News 4, we are always working to get your questions answered, bring you the most current information on the coronavirus outbreak. This afternoon, Dr. Alex Garza, Chief Medical Officer for SSM Health, as well as the head of the St. Louis Metropolitan Pandemic Task Force, joining us live this afternoon. Dr. Garza, thank you so much for your time. Sure. We did see a big jump in cases. I just mentioned in Illinois, single day cases, but you also announced within the last half hour that a thousand people in our area have recovered from COVID-19. So our question is, do you still yeah. expect our area to peak this weekend? Yeah, uh, according to our best models, that's what it's telling us. And so, as, as I've said, you know, models are really just a best approximation. Um, but uh, according to those, it should be peaking around this weekend. And so I want to be careful when I talk about peaking, though. So it's not just a, um, a sudden increase in cases and then a dropping off. It, it's almost like more cresting a hill more so than, than going up to the top of a mountaintop. And so we'll see the gradual increase and then we'll see a gradual decrease. So it's, it's really drawn out more over a length of time. This afternoon, Missouri Governor Mike Parson emphasized again that he is still moving forward with his plans to open up in Missouri in just over a week now on May 4th. Do you think that that timeline is too early? Well, as I've mentioned before, we really want to see a decrease in the number of hospitalizations before we would feel comfortable with um, increasing any risk of transmission, which is really what opening up uh, certain businesses and other parts of the economy do. So anything that we can do to prevent transmission is the goal. And uh, in order to set the stage for that, we really want to make sure we've driven down that rate of infection as far as it can go. And the best, uh, the best metric that we can use is that hospitalization number. So you seem to be most comfortable on reopening the economy when we're on that downward slope. An estimate on time of when we'll get to that comfortable spot for you. Yeah, well, as I, I'm always a, a little bit hesitant to say that, as I've said before, the virus dictates when, when that number occurs. Um, you know, if we're looking at our modeling numbers, you know, it should be a sustained decrease, but all of that is predicated on people still following all of those social distancing, shelter at home, washing hands, all of those things. If all of those things take place, uh, we should see a gradual decrease, and if if we see that uh, playing out, then we'll feel much more comfortable with opening the economy. We get a lot of calls into our newsroom on a daily basis, emails from viewers who say they believe they had COVID-19 symptoms all the way back in January and February, but they were never tested because if you think about it, it wasn't on our radar here in the area back then. Should we be testing yeah. those people now to see if they have antibodies and would that be helpful? Yeah, it's a great question. I've, I've heard that from many people. Um, so uh, the, the short answer to your question is yes. So what you're talking about is those antibody tests. Um, so there's certain other places that have done this type of testing. There's most recently out in LA where they've done what's called a zero prevalence test. And so that's collecting random samples of blood from people to see who has antibodies to the coronavirus. And uh, shockingly, they've found uh, the number is much higher than what they predicted. It was around 5% of their population. I, I would caution, though, that um, enough isn't known about those antibody tests to understand what that actually means. So it doesn't actually mean that you have this perfect immunity to the coronavirus. But, but the short answer to your question is, is yes, we should be doing some of those seroprevalence studies. Well, the president talked about how heat and sunlight kills the virus in services outside. Do you think... As we head into the warmer weather into summer, we'll be safer in open areas that have warm and, and hot surfaces. So the, the sunlight and being outdoors certainly decreases the risk of transmission, but there's a lot of other factors that come into play um, with that. And so it's a lot of those things that we talk about, whether how close you are in proximity to other people, the length of contact time. And remember, you know, not every day is sunny, not every day mm -hmm. is warm, but there are certain factors that do impact the virus. And so it, it's not, you know, completely unreasonable, but I think it's really a, a minimal impact on the transmission, much more so than all those other things that we do, such as washing hands and social distancing. New York Times had an article today where an ER doctor said only about 70% of COVID-19 tests are accurate. Is that your understanding? Is that what perhaps we're seeing here in our area? 
So that's a common number that's thrown out, but you really have to appreciate where that number came from. And so that number came from a study out of China where the researchers went back and looked at the clinical symptoms of COVID and then looked at their, their testing beforehand. There's a lot of things that go into whether a test is gonna be positive or negative. And part of that depends on where the patient is in their journey for infectivity. Because remember, we're looking for a piece of RNA um, in the virus. And so if you don't have enough copies of the virus, then it's difficult to detect. And also if the virus has gone down uh, the respiratory tract, so away from the nose where we typically get those samples, then you're not gonna find as many copies too. So it, it's, it's a number that's out in the public, um, but it's much more nuanced than just saying, you know, 70% accuracy. Dr. Garza, on a personal note, when we are able to get back out and everything is safe for us to get back to our routine, whatever that looks like, I have a two-year-old that wants to head straight to the park. I have a husband who wants to go out on a date night. I'm curious for you, what's at the top of your list when you and your family are, are able to get out and do things again? That's a great question. Uh, you know, probably a lot of those same things. Um, being able to, to go to the park. Um, my kids are, are big swimmers, and so um, getting them back into the pool so they can get back to their swim teams is a big deal. And then my other son plays baseball, and so w it, nothing would make us happier mm -hmm. than going to watch him play baseball. Yeah, and I think after all this, we're all gonna need those extra smiles, those big family moments when we right. can get out there. Dr. Garza, thank you again for your time this afternoon. We appreciate it. Sure, anytime. Our other 